Hey guys, in this video I will be giving you all 10 tips on how to become more successful and more comfortable in math classes. If you've been subscribed to my channel for a long time, then you know that math hasn't always been my favorite subject or my strong suit, but after taking a year off in math during my freshman year of college, I'm back doing calculus for my sophomore year, and I basically just wanted to compile a couple of things that I'm keeping in mind for the rest of the semester, and hopefully these things will help you as well. Before I get started, I just want to give a huge thank you to Texas Instruments um, from the TI Calculators for sponsoring this video. Um, I've never done a sponsored video before, but I have used TI Calculators since I was maybe 11 or 12, and I have always owned Texas Instruments Calculators. They're my favorite ones, and it's a company that I trust a lot, and I appreciate their support of my channel. My first piece of advice is definitely very straightforward and simple, maybe something that a lot of people already do, but just in case, it's really important to mention that you should be doing every single piece of homework that you are assigned for math class, every single piece, whether or not it's checked for completion, whether or not it's checked for accuracy, make sure that you're doing it no matter what. And if you have any trouble spots, make sure you're doing extra practice on that. Don't wait until the night before the test to start doing extra practice on the problems that you didn't really understand from the entire unit. It's better to make sure you have a solid understanding as you go along in the class. Um, I just did this the other night um, and I have a flipped classroom setting so we learn at home via online videos and then go to class and do group work and discussions and worksheets collaboratively and stuff like that. So I have an option where I can just click on specific questions and do like more practice on that specific type of problem. If you have a traditional classroom setting, just make sure you use your textbook and get extra problems from there. In the same vein of doing homework, make sure you are marking all questions um, that you either get wrong or that you're unsure of. and. Obviously, it's good to do that so that you can go and do that extra practice later, but also so that you yourself know when you go back to study or look over old problems, you know where your struggle spots were. Never avoid learning why you're doing something wrong. Instead, sort of embrace that challenge. The third and fourth tips that I have for you guys sort of go hand in hand as well. My first is that don't stress out and get frustrated if you hit a wall and you feel completely helpless, completely unable to solve a particular problem. I think a lot of the reason why I didn't like to do math as much when I was younger is because I would get frustrated very, very easily and not be happy with myself and feel like I'm dumb because I didn't understand things. But that stress and tension only makes it worse and makes you not like the subject more and then you don't want to study and then it's just not the best mindset to have. So in, so going along with that, I would highly, highly recommend changing the I can't do this statement in your head to I can try it and I can attempt it and I can work to do better. Um, that mindset change for me, specifically involving math, has helped me so much as I approach different problems that I'm not very comfortable with. As you get closer to a test or a quiz, make sure that you're keeping track of all the formulas and properties that you are going to be assessed on. Make sure that you know exactly what you're going to be assessed on and then afterwards make a checklist of all of the topics and subtopics that you will be assessed on as well. The reason that I like to do this and I especially like to do it on this notepad because it sort of separates things into easy and difficult and so um, I make a list of all of the things that need to be studied and then sort of categorize them on whether or not I need to spend a lot of time on them or not. I do this before starting to study for every single math test I have and it makes it very, very easy to see what I have to do and also allows me to make sure I'm not missing a single topic because one time I forgot to study one particular type of like 
limit or something like that and it ended up being on the test and I got that question wrong just because I forgot that that's something that we covered. The seventh thing that I would say is essential to doing well in a math class is to make sure that you are using all of the resources that are available to you. So by all of the resources, I mean like in literally any sense. So first, there are a ton of online resources that are usually free. Um, if you guys know of any other websites that you really love to use, please leave it in the comments down below. Um, but things that I turn to frequently is like, I'll just go on YouTube and search a topic. There are a ton of math teachers um, and professors that post videos of them working out problems and usually you'll find the topic that you're looking for. Um, Khan Academy is a gem. There are a ton that are like that. Um, for extra practice, I usually use KUTA for like extra worksheets. I use my textbook. I use my um, workbooks. They're AP prep books if you are in high school still. Um, you can also just Google the topic and do like worksheet extra practice. You will absolutely find stuff, I promise. Use your calculator. Um, I always forget to use my calculator um, if I'm working out like bigger numbers or something or I'm working with trig. It's really, really important that you actually use what's in front of you. I have the TI-84 plus CE calculator and I love it. I think it's really important to make sure you're using it to make your math solving a lot faster and same goes for like the online sort of like assistant calculators that show you like the steps that can be like symbol lab or wolfram alpha stuff like that so again if you guys have your own suggestions definitely leave those in the comments my eighth tip is to obviously ask for help. This is something that everyone should know. It's really straightforward. But the thing is, is that you want to ask people in the right way. So only ask someone for help if you've attempted the problem that you are dealing with at least once or twice. Like just try on your own rather than going up to someone and kind of whining like, I don't get it. What do I do? But like not have made any attempt yourself. Um, people that you can ask can be a teacher assistant, your peers definitely take advantage of like making group chats with people that are in your class. It is invaluable to have that resource to just ask questions to, um, as well as your teacher, but make sure that you've at least attempted to do the problem before going to ask for help. An organizational tip for doing math classes is to absolutely keep a notebook separate for all of your scratch work, um, whether it's for worksheets or textbook problems or worked examples, whatever it may be, just have all of your scratch work in one place and make sure you're organizing it by labeling like what section it's from or the page from a textbook it's from or like the assignment you're working on just so that if you're going back to study and you're like, oh, I kind of want to try that problem again without looking at my solution. Um, you'll know exactly where to find it since you've already labeled it. And my last and final tip is after you've taken any test or quiz, make sure that you're going back, looking it over, and reviewing and understanding why you got certain questions wrong, um, or if you got like partial credit or something like that. Make sure you fully understand your mistake. A lot of the time, math is a subject that builds on itself, so if you don't have a solid foundation of understanding for one topic, you often will come back to that topic in like more difficult sections if that makes sense so you want to be sure that you really do comprehend why you got things wrong and then correct your error and learn from your mistakes so I really hope that some of these were applicable and helpful for you guys and I will see you guys in my next one bye guys